Raccoons are usually known for their cunning nature and stealing habit. No matter how much they have, they always have a greed for more. This is the story of a greedy raccoon named RJ. He was given enough chances to have a good meal, but he wished for even more and got in big trouble. Like usual, RJ is trying to steal food. He's aiming for a chip's packet stuck in the vending machine. Despite continuous attempts, he can't get the snack. Suddenly his gaze shifts toward the hill behind him. He reminds himself that it's not a good idea to find food in the cave, but his hunger is taking over his mind. He climbs up to the cave where the grizzly bear Vincent is hibernating. RJ grabs a bunch of chips and is about to leave but then he sees the huge pile of food behind Vincent. His mouth begins to water, and he jumps to the other side. He murmurs to himself about taking only what he needs, but his greedy instincts make him steal all of the food. The cunning raccoon is still not satisfied yet. He also wants the food Vincent is holding in his hand. RJ snatches away that too but as soon as he opens the packet, Vincent wakes up. He gets really angry about seeing his food being taken away. RJ apologizes and says he will not take anything. Unfortunately, his arm hits the food trolley and it slides away right to the main road where a bunch of cars run over it. All the hard collected food of Vincent is turned into sand. He grabs RJ and proceeds to kill him. To save his life, RJ promises to bring the same amount of food for the bear. Vincent likes the offer and gives RJ just a week to collect the food and he must not try to run away at any cost. The scared raccoon is losing hope already. How in the world would he gather so much food alone? He travels to the forest to search for help. Inside there lives a pack of woodland animals. They have just woken up from their hibernation and started looking for food. They aren't worried as they are great at searching. That's why they call themselves foragers. One of them is a hyperactive red squirrel named Hammy. He can run and talk at the speed of light. While roaming around he finds something unusual and calls his pack to see it. The forest is blocked by a huge wall spreading far from both sides. The hedge has left the foragers in shock and terror. Their leader is a wise and patient turtle named Vernie. He calms everyone and decides to check out the other side of the hedge. It's joined to a city house. Vernie has never seen something like that. He's not used to the environment and keeps bumping into things and trips over here and there. He gets on the edge of losing his life multiple times. He then falls inside a toy truck and a car runs right over him. Finally, a hockey player throws him back into the forest. This experience left poor Vernie traumatized. He can't believe that while they were hibernating, most of the forest had been turned into a city. Their food sources have been destroyed too. The foragers were drowning in sorrow when RJ made his appearance. He believes that the city they are calling danger is actually a blessing. It has more food than animals could ever imagine. Vernie's tail starts to wiggle and he doesn't like what RJ said. Sneaking into the city seems too risky and Vernie doesn't want to put his family in danger. When RJ sees his defeat, he pulls out his hidden trick. As soon as he opens a bag of cheese nachos, the aroma spreads all around. The foragers can't resist it and rushes to try some nachos. The crispy texture and creamy taste have made the animals feel heavenly good. They want more. RJ takes them on a trip to the city. Humans have more food than needed. Animals eat to live but humans live to eat. They eat when they are sad, they eat when they are happy. They eat hot food and cold food, fast food and healthy food, and they use food as beauty remedies and even to fight. For humans, enough is never enough. They get more than necessary and when they can't eat it all, they throw it away in the trash. If the trash food is good then the fresh food must be better. While the little animals were exploring the trash, the house owner catches them and hits them with a broom. RJ and the foragers run for their lives. Vernie is done with this experiment. He doesn't want to take this risk ever again and asks RJ to leave them alone. The next morning after dreaming about Vincent, RJ decides to try his luck again. The foragers are surviving on bark and barely have anything else to eat. RJ makes up an emotional story about his family and tries to gain sympathy. His trick works and Vernie lets him become a member of the foragers. After succeeding in his wicked plan, RJ proceeds to his next step. He takes Hammy over the hedge with him and shows him the Girl Scouts selling cookies. Hammy's mouth waters and he wants some cookies too. RJ messes up Hammy's fur and makes him look as scary as possible. Afterward, he sends the dumb squirrel to scare off the scouts. The plan backfires and the scouts start hitting Hammy brutally. Bernie reaches there too and rushes to save Hammy. The girls get scared by the ugly turtle and run away. RJ and Hammy take this chance to drag away the cookies. Later on, the other foragers join RJ too. They keep visiting the city more frequently and steal all the food in sight. They eat a part of it and store the excess for winter. Little do they know, RJ is using them to pay off his debt. The last thing left on his checklist is an icebox. Ozzy the opossum stops a car by playing dead. The kids are fascinated by the strange creature and gather around it. Meanwhile, RJ and the other foragers sneak in to steal the icebox. Vernie comes over to stop them but no one listens to him. Suddenly a creepy van arrives there. It's the Verminators, an animal exterminator company. 
The head exterminator Dwayne steps out of the van and assures everyone of the safe disposal of unwanted animals. After taking away the icebox, RJ gestures to Ozzy to follow them back to the forest. All the foragers are really happy with their success. They are grateful to RJ for teaching them the modern ways of surviving. They have even prepared a surprise gift for their new leader. A customized room with a sofa, RJ's favorite snacks, and a huge television. RJ can't believe the love he's getting from these innocent animals who are unaware of his true intentions. As soon as RJ turns on the television, it plays a movie about a guy deceiving his family. This traumatizes RJ and he excuses himself. He can't get emotional so easily. He must control himself and stick to his plan. RJ decides to finish his task and deliver the food to the bear. But the food disappeared. Vernie wants to return the food to the rightful owners. He doesn't want to get killed by the exterminators. RJ tries to stop him but Vernie doesn't listen to him and starts a fuss. The noise wakes up the scary dog living nearby. He catches Vernie and RJ tries to sneak away. The dog notices him too and starts to follow both of them. His collar chain gets stuck with the food trolley and it is dragged along and breaks through the walls. They also hit the barbecue station and catch up the fuel cylinder. RJ tries his best to distract the dog but it's all in vain. The cylinder rubs to the ground and catches fire. The dog is left behind but the food trolley flies toward the sky along with Vernie and RJ. They grab an umbrella for a safe landing but the food trolley drops over a car and blasts. The sparks also hit the umbrella and Vernie and RJ fall down roughly to the forest. RJ blames Vernie for the whole incident. The foragers get really disappointed at the poor turtle. They believe that RJ is helping them embrace the future but Vernie is holding them back. This makes Vernie lose his temper and he accuses RJ of dragging the animals toward extinction. He believes RJ is succeeding in his plan just because the foragers are too stupid to figure out the reality. The poor animals don't like being called stupid. They are really upset at Vernie's behavior and decide to leave him for good. Vernie is sad but RJ is even worse. There's just a night left till the bear wakes up and there's no food left. Moreover, the exterminators have set up deadly traps everywhere in the city. Now the foragers can't even get enough food to survive. It's all because of RJ. He feels really disappointed in himself. He put everyone in danger along with him. Vernie comes to him to apologize but RJ has realized his mistake. He was about to tell the whole truth but then he saw a food delivery at the city house. His greediness awakes once again and he's ready to risk it all for it. After bringing Vernie back to the pack, RJ explains his next plan. The whole house is guarded by laser lights and shooting devices. The safety key is attached to the pet cat. It can be used to get into the house safely. The plan is to lure the cat and steal away the key. This will be done by Stella. She may be a skunk for now but with a little makeup, she can be disguised as a pretty cat. The first step is to turn off the laser lights. Hammy is going to help with that. RJ sends him to the roof and guides him with a pointing laser. Hammy reaches the control button and turns off the lasers. Now the foragers can enter the lawn. The next step will be carried out by Stella. She meets the pet cat and distracts him with her unique style. Within a few minutes, she succeeds in stealing the key and throws it toward Vernie. After getting the key, the foragers enter the house and see the huge amount of food. They pull out the cling sheet and use it as a slide that sends the food right to the trolley outside the door. Stella keeps the cat busy till the next morning while the other foragers gather all the food. The owner has woken up and proceeds towards the kitchen. The animals must leave the house right now. Suddenly RJ sees the chips packet. Vincent has asked for it too. RJ must get it. Vernie tries to stop him. He can't understand why RJ is risking everything for a packet of chips. The foragers are trying their best to slow down the owner but they can't keep it for long. Meanwhile, RJ still can't reach the chips. Bernie starts shouting at him for such a useless attempt. RJ loses his temper and spits out all the truth. The foragers are left in deep shock but RJ doesn't care and drops the vine bottles to reach the chips. The noise brings the house owner there. She screams at the sight of animals roaming around her house. Stella hears the scream and rushes to save her family. She shoots a blast of smell and RJ takes it as a chance to run away with the food. The poor foragers can't make it in time and get caught by the exterminator. He put them in cages and loaded them into his van. RJ climbs up the hill and hands over the food to Vincent. The bear is glad to see him and admires his selfishness. He has never seen someone as insensitive as RJ who deceived a family so easily. If he keeps up like this, soon he will end up like Vincent. But RJ doesn't want that. He may have gotten the food but it's not his true happiness. What he actually desires is a family. He needs to get it back. Saying this RJ pushes the food trolley and blocks the exterminator's van. Vincent gets angry and attacks RJ. The little raccoon has finally realized the actual wealth. It's the people who love you unconditionally. 
The van driver is knocked off and the porcupines take over the steering wheel. Hammy turns on the GPS and they start heading back to their forest. Vernie is happy to see RJ coming back for them and this time his tail isn't wiggling. He convinces the others of RJ's kind intentions and lets them step inside the van. However, the grizzly bear followed them too. The van loses control and hits a bunch of balloons that fly Vincent away in the sky. Afterward, the van slides over a street sign and breaks into a house. The foragers get out and run back to their home but wait. Vincent has come back. On one side is the deadly bear and on the other side are the exterminators while the foragers are hiding inside the hedge. They don't have enough time for any plan. Hammy is the only one who can make the best use of the little time. RJ feeds him the energy drink that doubles Hammy's energy. The world seems to be slowing down against him. He rushes to the laser control and switches it on and then comes back to his family. Vincent, Dwayne, and the house owner fall over the lasers and burn themselves brutally. The police reach the crime scene. They capture the scary bear and arrest the exterminator and the house owner for using illegal devices against the poor animals. Everything is back to normal. Vernie tells RJ if he had told them about the promise he made with the bear, they would have let him take the food. That's what a family is for looking out for each other. RJ's heart melts down. He's happy to be a part of such a warm family but wait, they have no food gathered for winter yet. No worries though. While Hammy had maxed his speed, he also gathered enough nuts to fill up the whole log. He's definitely not stupid but a hero for sure. We always keep running after selfish desires thinking that they will make us happy. But true happiness lies in being surrounded by the people who love you and are always there for you. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Don't forget to watch our upcoming next videos. Thanks for watching.